Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday morning to you all. I hope you folks are doing awesome out there this morning and having a fantastic start to your day and weekend. Here to bring you the latest on what's going to happen weather-wise for your day. Once again, we run the risk of strong to severe storms for a pretty large area across the central portion of the country. We'll speak in detail on that, talk about the timing, the evolution, and of course the um, areas of the states out there that run the highest risk of severe weather. And folks, I'll tell you, you know, I'm going to have that on repeat for the foreseeable future. Now, of course, not every day is going to run the same category risk of strong to severe storms, but I can tell you just about every day between now and the rest of summer, even in the portions of fall, I mean, maybe even to early winter, we're at least going to have a general to maybe even a marginal risk of severe storms. So general risk of thunderstorms, marginal risk level one out of five of strong to severe storms. It's just the way it is, you know, daytime heating pulse thunderstorms at minimum and then sometimes we have dips in the jets enough flow to really promote more of a higher end severe weather threat and it's still what is it june 1st now happy june by the way it's still early in the game as far as you know connecting spring to summer i fully consider us being in in summer now i have since like the middle portion of may to me down here in the south once school gets out it's officially summer i do not consider june 21st the start of summer in my head and i also consider september 1st the start of fall in my head even though it's still 182 degrees here in south carolina so i'm already counting down those days to um a fall for me you guys have been following along uh for a while know that i absolutely love the fall time it is by far my favorite month winter being a, a pretty close second but anyways we're going to break it down to kickstart your june and try to figure this one out for your weather for today. And after we do all that, we're going to spend a little bit of time on what's going to happen going forward. We're going to get very detailed on the pattern, though, in a video I'm going to make between now and the next couple evenings. So be expecting an evening video as I've taken a break over the last several days, sometime over the next couple days. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. Thank you all um, for the incredible support in the month of May. It was uh, more successful than... Um, April and March. So uh, thank you for the support with that. Had a bit, had a good bit of growth in the month of May. Uh, typically May isn't one of my huge months is on this channel. So thank you for that. And if you guys got anything that I could pray about or pray over as always, please put those in the comments below. I am behind on comments and prayer requests um, like I typically am on the weekends, but I'll try to get caught up with all of that here in the next couple of days. So let's get rocking and rolling. So a lot of moisture now surging up the deep south the mid south all the way into the midwest the upper midwest into the great lakes region all the way up into canada just scattered rains but once you get down here we actually have a tornado warning as of around 7 11 a.m central time i'm sorry eastern time 6 11 central time here in central mississippi so hopefully that's not confirmed or anything i haven't had a chance to really check that so i hope you guys are doing okay here in mississippi we got some flash flood warnings down here in the panhandle florida a little bit of flow, very light flow out there. And we'll, we'll talk about that too. You know, there's not a real big driver as far as flow aloft driving, uh, you know, widespread strong to severe storms, but there's just enough here across the high plains to get them going. We already got a complex of showers and storms. It's severe lim limits across some um, areas of western Nebraska, some scattered rains across Kansas and northern Oklahoma, and a little bit of energy dancing around here and Texas. A little bit of energy up here in the Dakotas. There's a lot There's a lot of little features going on. And then we do got some rain um, up here in western Washington. So this is what's going on right now. Watches, warnings, and advisories. Check this out. We haven't seen this on the map in a while. This is excessive heat watches. The heat is coming for you folks. Over here, William in Las Vegas. Um, Ron, San Diego is going to get quite hot. Big tall ridge is going to build out here in the next several days. And it's going to get pretty darn hot out here for you folks. High wind watches up here in Montana for a system that's going to move across this region. Dense fog advisories across the middle of the country. We do have those severe thunderstorm watches that will drop here shortly across this region of Nebraska. Flood watches down here for three counties, three or four counties here in the Panhandle of Florida and a few counties here in southern Alabama. So these is watches, warnings, and advisories. And the excessive rainfall outlook, there is a moderate risk up right now for that same area that I just mentioned that has flood watches in Alabama and the Panhandle of Florida. This might get downgraded to a slight risk. This is mainly for what's going on right now. You're getting a lot of rain down here, but there is a slight risk that extends all the way up into western Kentucky, very small portions of southern Indiana and Illinois, even into the Boot Hill, Missouri. 
all the way through the central and western sections of Tennessee. So we'll watch for that. Um, slight risk here once again of uh, flash flooding for Kansas through western Oklahoma through the heart of Texas. So in the yellow area, that means you have at least a 15% chance of rainfall exceeding flash flooding guidance. So um, the Storm Prediction Center, slight risk from, I mean, down here, like southwestern Texas, eastern New Mexico, panhandle of Texas, western and panhandle of Oklahoma, the entire western half of Kansas, entire eastern section of Colorado, and all of western Nebraska, all the way up here to just south of Rapid City, South Dakota. So level two out of five risk. Not everybody will get rain in this, but if you do, you could get a nasty hailstorm, damaging winds, and there's even a shot at a tornado. A marginal risk does extend level one out of five all the way down through the rest of Texas pretty much, all the way down to the deep south, up to the mid-south a little bit. Extends up to Nashville. I mean, even into western Kentucky. So uh, tornado risk with this, just a 2% risk here and a 2% risk here. So there's two areas to watch for, for may maybe a more favor favorable area of um, tornado development. So we'll certainly be mindful of the tornado threat today. It's not the highest risk as far as um, a threat level today, but it's something something we certainly need to watch for. Uh, in the yellow, that is a 15% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. And then the hell threat could have some significant hell today, no doubt about it here. Southeastern New Mexico, southwestern Texas, for Stockton include, included in this. And then up here, you got a 10% risk of significant hail here. Uh, once again, in sections of Colorado, which has been hit hard by some nasty hail storms over the last couple of days, southwestern Nebraska, northwestern sections of Kansas, 10% risk in these black outline regions, a hatch risk of hail exceeding two inch in diameter or larger. Uh, so we do have the um, just the rest of the 15% risk area too, which means there's a one, uh, there's a 15% chance of one inch in diameter or larger hill within 25 miles of any given location. So let's talk about the Southeast. So we do got a lot of moisture in Alabama. It cuts off pretty quick once it gets to the Alabama Georgia line. We got moisture all the way up to Nashville. We'll keep this going throughout the day. There's still dry air kind of entrenched east of the Appalachian Mountains right in here. Uh, but this will eventually kind of erode, if you will, uh, which means, you know, basically we'll lose the dry air influence and we'll start to moisten up the atmosphere. It'll take a while. That's why a lot of this rain that tries to make its way into this air mass kind of gets ate up, if you will. It, it, it dries out, basically. But throughout the morning, we're going to continue to get these storms that rumble along and just off the, uh, the Gulf Coast line. You know, so you guys are going to be dealing with some stormy conditions here in southern Alabama the panhandle of Florida throughout the morning, maybe early afternoon. Some more thunderstorm development could get going here along the Mississippi-Alabama line. Points west and east, um, and we'll continue to keep this going. But you notice not, not really much of anything kind of makes it into the Carolinas. I mean, it starts to kind of drift into Georgia, not a whole lot into the Carolinas. It takes us to, to, to really rise them dew points, raise the humidity for us to start to saturate the the atmosphere to, to actually drop some rain and i'll be honest in my house i don't think i think we went about 10 days without rain so um you know i think there is a rainy pattern coming up and i will talk about that here in a second um but you know we could definitely use some rain here it's done gotten kind of dry um but some more pop-up showers even some storm activity some of these which could be strong or severe will get going in central tennessee later this evening northern alabama northern mississippi and then more of a concentrated complex of storms down here in Louisiana. And then we'll just kind of get scattered shower and downpour development across Mississippi, um, maybe to Alabama, especially Tennessee to Kentucky, up to Southern Apps and Central Apps region. Some scattered showers are waking up too in the Southeast also. A little bit closer look at this area that I am watching though. Okay, we're everywhere. Let's put my face back down here and let's get this back up here. All right, so we keep this going. You see all those storms down there near Mobile, Gulfport, Panhandle, Florida. And then there's those additional showers and storms that get going here across the deep south, the mid-south. And then we'll watch this area that could bring some uh, very heavy rain, some, um, some storm action here, some gusty winds, the potential for some hail. But I would watch out for a flooding threat here in the southern half of Louisiana. I mean, all the way from Lake Charles. I could get all the way up to Shreveport, all the way to Baton Rouge, New Orleans, the Bayou, Louisiana, Thibodeau down there. Um, what is it, Homa? A lot of storm activity later this evening for sure. Definitely a stormy night here in the Bayou. 
and all this will clear out and then we'll just get the development of more shower and storm activity along the Cumberland Plateau down to Huntsville um, all the way down to potentially like Auburn, Alabama, Dothan. So certainly uh, be aware of that. Nothing too crazy, nothing too severe, but certainly something to be mindful of. Rainfall between now and the next 24 hours. This is mainly for what's going to happen this morning and what's happening already this morning. But this is for the development of more rain later on this afternoon, this evening. Of course, it's raining in these areas right now, but another inch, inch and a half of rain is possible in these sections right here, the deep south and mid south. So the northeast today, a pretty quiet weather day, a nice, a nice Saturday. You can see moisture rising up from your southwest, though, but the immediate day, it's fine. Some rain will start to move into Ohio, uh, eastern Ohio this evening. I'm sorry, western Ohio. You see the rain in Kentucky. And then by the time we get to the middle of the night, some rain showers are possible, just widespread in the state of Ohio, uh, southwestern West Virginia. And then we get into tomorrow morning and just rainy time starting to greet you guys across the Ohio Valley, starting to get some rain in western PA, scattered showers in West Virginia, western Virginia, Erie PA. Uh, so, But you're still waking up to another nice morning tomorrow morning across the northeast with most of the rain still off to your southwest. So a nice day in the northeast. Enjoy it. Uh, South Central U.S., a little bit of a different story. Um, a couple of things are going to be going on, and I'm going to tell you right off the dot, models struggle with this lack of flow out here. They struggle latching on to anything. So this is around 3 p.m. this afternoon. Could, have, be having, could be having a line of storms here in eastern, northeastern Texas. You see this cluster of storms, some storms dancing around down here near Houston. But you see these individual supercells here in southwestern Texas. They could produce all hazards, very large hail especially. And then we keep this going. There's that cluster of storms kind of dipping down across all the eastern counties of Texas. Still got storms over here, some supercells, very large hail. Probably extremely photogenic uh, structure with these storms. Um, definitely just a just a pattern that supports that supports just basically the the storm chasers out there you know the people who you know there's there's always you know always mention the storm chasers i know there are people who are active in the community know about uh following these storm chasers online when they go live but there's always two main objectives uh for storm chasers um when getting content and i, I would i would say one of the biggest ones is obviously trying to track down where the tornado is in the storm but the secondary, I would say, is structured those um, photographers out there. You know, go out there on a low tornado risk day. Um, and like out here in the high plains, we've got wide open sections. And you can get some beautiful photos, some beautiful time, time, la time lapses. And, you know, those are those things you see in magazines and, and uh, movies and stuff like that where you know you just have these beautiful storms out here that really aren't producing a tornado but just uh, very photogenic cloud structure supercells these tall updrafts so this has kind of been the pattern like this over the last a few days and i think it will continue to be it be like this today so definitely you know that's something to check out if you like looking at clouds out here but these storms are also dangerous too so We'll continue just to get that flow throughout this evening and some nasty storms down here in Texas. Of course, there's some mountainous regions down here, so you're not going to be able to have as much wide open fields out here. But, you know, if you live out here, very large hail, very, very large hail is, as I would say, the biggest threat out here. Some gusty winds and even a brief tornado. You see this cluster of storms here in southwestern Kansas, the panhandle of Oklahoma. And these could dip into the panhandle of Texas, too. I mean, this is getting to like a 10, 11 p.m. tonight. And then we'll have to see what happens as these grow up scales after midnight tonight. They get kind of fully um, inside Oklahoma at this point around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. So western Oklahoma getting some thunderstorms and they might kind of just fizzle out as we're waking up tomorrow morning. So there's a lot of little clusters of storms to watch out for. Eastern Texas, the big one. Um, southwestern Texas, uh, eastern New Mexico. And then watch the energy that comes out of Colorado no doubt here and just a little bit closer look at this region here and this is pivotal weather i don't necessarily like the model look on this They're, the colors they use it's never i'm never a big fan of it weather bell I'm, i swear by weather bell i love it pivotal weather is awesome for like looking at severe weather soundings and dew points and stuff like that um but i do wish weather bell had like a section just like pivotal weather pivotal weather is the best with sections no doubt 
Um, but, you know, we get to this afternoon here in the central high plains and the plains, just not a whole lot going on. Then we get into this evening and there's those storms right here. I would watch out even Dodge City up to Goodland, too. Um, you want to watch these storms up here near northeastern Colorado, southwestern Nebraska. These could be some big hail producers. You see this? I know this doesn't look awfully impressive on this, but I'm telling you, watch out for these storms. And then you keep on going. And you want to watch these storms overnight in northern Kansas, southern Nebraska. It's possible they could produce some nasty overnight hell storms. And then we get into tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about this area of storms here in a second when we get to the northern plains panel. Um, but yeah, uh, north central U.S., a lot of scattered shower activity. It'll be a rainy morning here in the next couple hours and early afternoon across Chicago. Um, rain stretching all the way up the western coastline of Lake Michigan all the way into the UP of Michigan scattered showers and some thunderstorms could develop behind this see some storms forming here in the western UP storms here in the western sections of uh, Wisconsin southeastern Minnesota some storms back here in Iowa storms embedded in some of this rain starting to develop here in western Illinois and you keep this going and we go all the way to this evening I mean, watch out for some storms up here in the UP of Michigan I don't think they'll pack much of a punch but certainly something to be mindful of it's to let you know that you're really starting to get into the uh, the, the summertime feel out here. I know that early June, probably up here in the Great Lakes region, probably still can consist of some pretty uh, chilly mornings and sometimes chilly days. It's chilly down here in South Carolina. I mean, it got all the way down to 50 degrees in my house this morning. So uh, definitely a, a very chilly start to June here, even in the south. And it's mainly just the southeast, but... Some rain across the Midwest, the Great Lakes region, uh, the Ohio Valley, and this will continue. And then we start to see the development of some nasty storms here. Very isolated, though, across the north central U.S. and the high plains. And all this rain will begin to sweep across Detroit, Cleveland, uh, Columbus uh, after midnight tonight into the wee hours of the morning. And we're waking up tomorrow morning with just some rainy times over here. Some storms still cruising across the Dakotas. Uh, but a closer look at my friends down here. Uh, if you got any plans from Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, up to lower Michigan, Kentucky, here's a closer look at the rain. This is around 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m. So, I mean, just pretty much just consistent rains across Indianapolis down to Evansville. Gets a little bit more scattered and isolated about here in Illinois, but it's raining pretty good around 3 p.m. in Chicago, raining down here in the western half of Kentucky. And then we get to about 7 p.m., raining all the way up here to Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, East Lansing, I mean, hasn't quite gotten to Detroit yet. Mike can get some dinner plans in before the rain moves in later in the evening. Rain's starting to move into the western sections of Ohio. Raining down here near Cincinnati, probably still Louisville also. So uh, definitely some ra a rainy day expected across this entire region you see here. And by the time I'm waking up tomorrow morning, I think it's mainly clear in Illinois and starting to head out of Indiana. So rainfall between now and the next 24 hours. Won't add up to a ton, but there's this, there's pockets that could get over an inch of rain. You see these this orange area right here, that's over an inch, and certainly a lot more rain once you get further south in Illinois and other states further south than that. So uh, for my folks here in the northern plains, you'll want to watch for these storms down here. This is, I mean, this is like two o'clock in the morning. These storms in the southern counties in Nebraska, watch out for these storms tonight. Storm could form right, right outside of um I would say right around the southwestern sections of uh, South Dakota. And then you want to watch as these try to grow upscale in eastern Nebraska. If you live in eastern Nebraska, another wee hours of the morning, stormy period coming up for your Sunday morning most likely. Watch out Omaha up to, up to the Sioux Falls region, Sioux City, um, all the way down to Lincoln. Could get some storms to greet you guys for your Sunday morning, no doubt. So. Moving forward and looking at the western U.S., I mean, it's a pretty quiet day. Once again, I think I've said that over and over again over the course of the last several weeks. Uh, some showers could dance around in southern Ohio, maybe a storm. But as we start to get into the overnight hours, well, after midnight, could wake up to some widespread rains here in areas of Oregon and especially the western half of Washington, where you guys in like Seattle, the Olympic Mountains, everybody in between. Waking up to some rainy, damp times, no doubt, here across the Pacific Northwest. So, Temperatures, nice. If you're not dealing with rain and showers and stuff like that, you know, it's going to warm well into the 70s and 80s. Look at Ohio, West Virginia, 
You notice how the eastern half of Kentucky is much warmer than the central and, and western half. It's because you're not dealing with the rain and storms. Northeast, just a phenomenal start to your, your June 1st, 60s, 70s. Some areas will get into the low 80s. Another nice day across the Carolinas. But once you start to get further west in Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, dealing with those, that rain and storm activity, another hot one down here in Florida. You guys need some water. You guys need what? What Florida really needs is just a very weak tropical system. I mean, like a depression that drops just widespread two to five inches of rain. Nothing too crazy, but enough to really soak you guys to, to help you guys get out of that drought, especially in sections of like the west coast of Florida, no doubt here. So I guess no doubt is my new word. I've been saying that a lot in this video, so that's cool. Uh, Southern Plains uh, getting into the 80s, some low 90s as possible. Nice day across the plains, 60s and 70s, and uh, pretty warm across the western U.S. in general. I mean, nothing too, cr nothing too crazy at all, but I mean, 90s and 100s as possible across the desert southwest. And I think it's going to get brutally hot out here, though, especially in the southwest here in the coming days. So going to get, going to get ready for that summer hot weather. It's coming. So day two. This is for tomorrow. A slight risk across areas of the high plains um, and this includes everybody in the yellow level two out of five okay so this includes areas like omaha pier aberdeen grand forks fargo so some of these northern communities up here is included in this but also portions of the central plains there is a, a marginal risk that extends all the way down here to midland texas those include minneapolis des moines kansas city wichita dodge city Rapid City, everybody shy in. I mean, you guys are including this marginal risk in a pretty large area. It does run the risk of thunderstorms. So what is this driven off of? I wouldn't be surprised if this connects, but there is two areas to watch that has a 2% risk of a tornado. Wind threat. All right. This entire yellow area, a 15% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. But look at this hatch risk down here. This includes areas in Nebraska, very small section of Kansas and and um and Colorado, a 10% risk of winds exceeding 75 miles per hour or higher. So we are watching what I think is going to going to be a nasty line of storms that sweeps across this area. I'll show you that what the radar is show. I'll show you what the H R model is showing here in a second. The hail threat, just a 15% risk of um, hail exceeding one inch in diameter in this region. So let's go on and look at what the radar, the HRRR model is showing about the evolution and timing of these storms for tomorrow. So it does look quite significant. I mean, I'm not talking about an outbreak, I don't think, or anything like that. But we're going to be dealing with tomorrow morning some lingering shower and storm activity from the overnight hours across like eastern South Dakota. Could get some more storms that form. What's going to happen is a little weak low is going to fly across the, the Dakotas. And a triple point will be met where you're going to have this basically this, this funnel of low-level moisture that's going to meet where the best uh, best lift is right up here in the Dakota. So this will promote an atmosphere that's going to support widespread strong and severe storms and very fast storm motion because it's right up here near the surface low. So it's most likely is going to uh, create a nasty line of storms probably across a lot of these areas you see on your screen. But you keep this going, you got to watch some tornadoes up here and this cluster of storms like up here near, what is it, Minot? You guys could could have a tornado threat. There is that secondary, well, I wouldn't call it a secondary. There's just two 2% risk areas. But one of those 2% risk areas is up here near the surface low. And I do think you're going to have just enough moisture that reaches this cluster of storms to really allow for these storms to really ingest some warm, moist air into these um, updrafts, allowing for a bit of a tornado threat. So if you live up here in North Dakota, there is going to be a tornado risk with these storms is what I'm trying to say up here so now watch what happens all this will continue especially in the southern edge of these storms okay tornado risk will be the highest but i mean hail strong winds is another threat also and i will mention you know you got some clusters of rain over here um near southwestern minnesota and surrounding states but watch what happens right in here down here in nebraska see how you get these clusters of storms and look how they're kind of somewhat discreet at first see look at this discrete cell here I mean, all of them here in South Dakota, down here in Nebraska. I mean, you even got to still watch this up here in North Dakota. This is what I worry about. I mean, I could see them increasing. I definitely think they'll they'll connect the 2% risk up here and down here right through South Dakota. I, I really do think they'll connect it. And I honestly think they'll bring a 5% risk area in somewhere 
We'll see what happens. I don't think we're going to get to a 10% risk of a tornado but just because of, of lack of what we call thermodynamics, lack of storm energy, lack of low-level um, moisture. But I do think we'll increase it somewhere. Uh, so, you know, we just got to watch all these storms. It's around 7 p.m., uh, 6 p.m. tomorrow. So, I mean, sun ain't down or anything like that. And just watch how they just continue to sweep. I mean, I really think that this could go to an enhanced risk. I'm not saying it is. I think there's a good chance it does, though. Um, but it, this kind of evolves more upscale, meaning it kind of clusters up into a line of storms. And at this point, it's sweeping across pretty much east, the eastern Dakotas, central and eastern Nebraska. And this continues. And, you know, this is around 10 p.m. Storms getting pretty close to the Sioux Falls, Sioux Cities region. And, um, you know, at this point, they start to hit Omaha around, I don't know, 10, 11 p.m., Lincoln. And I think that this will cause a lot of rus ruckus overnight after midnight across Minnesota down to Iowa, maybe as far south as Kansas. So certainly enough push in the atmosphere because of this surface low up here. Initial tornado severe threat up here in uh, North Dakota. And then we evolve and we have to watch these storms further south. And... Um, you know, these storms could be very interesting tomorrow. Um, I know if I was a storm chaser, I would love to chase this setup. Fast moving storms, though. But if you live up here, please be aware of these storms that sweep through tomorrow late afternoon and evening. No doubt. So there it is again. No doubt about it. So now that I've uh, brought it to my own attention, I'm probably going to say it a lot more. So, But here is what the HRRR model is showing as far as the dew points, the moisture levels. Remember dew points in the... 60s and 70s is really starting to get into that rich moist air that these storms love but remember up here dew points in like the upper 50s will get the job too you're higher in elevation and just more like i said higher up so um it works out just a little bit different when you live higher up you don't need quite as much moist air quite as much high, higher end dew points so i mean but already i mean as you're getting into about late morning you're getting a pool of dew points into the 60s i mean that'll get the job done riding right all the way up into this cluster of storms in North Dakota. But, I mean, look all the way down here in the eastern Dakotas, eastern Nebraska. I mean, dew points rising well into the 60s. So you're going to have a decent amount of moisture right out ahead of this line of storms that was going to form that I just showed you guys. And this is going to ride right into that moist air. And um, I think really aid in uh, just, I guess you would say, fuel. And ingredients to drive the severe weather threat so therefore you're gonna have in response to those higher dew points uh, definitely storm energy cape levels will be enough I'm not gonna pull that up but cape levels will be there to basically drive these storms into the late evening hours across this entire area so there is a severe weather threat for Monday uh, not very high not a lot of flow out there but I do want to mention this this could increase but a pretty large area of the country does run the risk of thunderstorms. But you got that level one to five risk right here across areas of the plains, getting into the Mississippi Valley region. And then after that, it says predictability too low. Day four onward, getting you know deeper into June. So, um, and I don't blame them. You know, there's not a whole lot of confidence to suggest a slight risk this far out. But if we talk about the pattern coming up, it's very weird to see on the 500 millibar chart. Remember. The blues on your screen, lower pressure. The oranges and the reds on your screen, higher pressure. Now, it looks kind of weird right now, right? It's not going to look as weird here in a second because it'll it'll really just show an amplified pattern and exactly what's going on. But, you know, this is getting into, what, Monday? This is Monday evening. OOZ Tuesday is, just might as well say Monday evening. So there is light flow going around this region i mean there's flow right down here a little bit up here a little bit more enhanced flow right here because you're at the base of this trough digging down but there is you know just where you see white colors right in here there's just enough flow in the atmosphere and wherever you do have that low level moisture which will probably be enough all the way up in here in this entire region right in here okay and probably a little bit further back too so enough moisture in the atmosphere in this region just enough flow, You're just going to have a huge area that runs the risk of thunderstorms. But it's really hard to see what's going on with this pattern. Now, you continue to move forward. You get into Tuesday. This is when the pattern starts to change. It gets much easier to understand and really see and what's driving everything. You got pieces of energy riding into here. You can see it pretty well. The ISO bars are kind of buckling right here in this white area between the ridge, right, and the trough. Lower pressure, higher pressure. 
Okay, so here comes this energy. What is this energy going to do as it continues to kind of work its way east, right? So tall ridge building in, temperatures are starting to rise. That's why you got those excessive heat watches across the southwest. Energy digging down, associated cold front with it also. Now watch as this trough just basically dips down. I mean, we're getting into Wednesday now. Ridge really building in out west, as you can tell. And then we get into Thursday. And heck, let's just take it all the way into... Let's take it. Let's back it up. Let's back it up to Thursday. This is around Thursday. Okay. At this point, there's there's three things going on. Ridge building in tall right here. Trough digging down right over here. And then you got this little energy right here that actually could do something for the southwest. Maybe just enough moisture to, I mean, to, to maybe do something finally somewhat interesting across the southwest. But we'll have to watch that. Okay. But in between that, remember I've mentioned this many times, the white area typically is where your, your more enhanced energy is. The energy that's going to probably promote more of the high-end weather. And I wouldn't say high-end, but just uh, more uh, impactful weather. So typically that flows right into here between the ridge and the trough. So I don't see any buckling of these lines, right? That, 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 which tells me there's not a lot, whole lot of energy in, in between the trough and the ridge. So are we going to get anything? Well, I think we will. Um, and I think that there's a lot of storm energy kind of building up to this. Now, remember, every trough has an associated cold front, and that'll be no different here. So there'll probably be some sort of cold front in here chopping off the ingredients that support severe weather. And then there's going to be probably moisture associated with the immediate trough. I mean, maybe not a lot, but there probably will be. But one thing I do want to mention, as this continues to dive down to the eastern U.S., this is a highly amplified pattern. So, I mean, at this point, Friday, I mean, you got this ridge. You got this trough settling in. You're probably going to have some sort of energy right in here. But but is it going to be a lot of energy? Little, And when I say energy, guys, I mean like little weak low pressures. We call them shortwave troughs, kind of riding down the ridge. We literally call them ridge riders. Okay? But a lot of times when you get the crazy patterns further east, you got the ridge kind of building over this region and then you got flow shooting down here. But this is all positioned a little bit further west, so a little bit different. So you want to watch this area right in here, okay? And a little bit maybe into the orange, maybe a little bit into here, okay? So one thing we know that is when this trough really settles in, I mean, this is getting all the way into like next Sunday and Monday. At this point, just a fully entrenched trough in place, ridge in place. And at this point, you're probably getting cooler than average temperatures across the central and areas of the eastern U.S. because of this trough. Now, I know a lot of people think, and I see this on Facebook, social media, when they see blue on this map, they immediately think below average temperatures. That's not the case. Instead, think of the blue on your screen as lower pressure, unsettled weather. And even then, that's not always the case. Typically with a trough, um, and when I say trough, I mean the area in blue, typically you have some sort of cold front associated with this. But seeing the cold front on this map is very hard. It is. Um, but it's there. And after that cold front moves in, then you have the cooler air associated with this lower pressure that kind of sweeps in. It's always hard to explain. Um, but yeah, so the pattern really goes from zonal to definitely buckling, if that makes sense. And, you know, as far as that severe weather element to this, um, we can look at storm fuel, and this is getting towards the end of the uh, week. Well, no, this is actually, I'm sorry, this is actually getting into, um, oh, I'll make sure I get it right. Yeah, 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 this is the end of this coming week, this coming week. So you got a lot of energy that's kind of shunted down to the southern plains. So this will probably bring at least a threat of some thunderstorms. But I want you to see this weird little dip right here in the cape. See how it kind of is like, it's like a bowl. That's your trough digging down with the associated cold front. This stabilizes the atmosphere, and you can really see it here. This is getting into um, this coming Thursday. See how there's like a, a real distinct cutoff between just a ton of uh, a fuel in the atmosphere. You know, Cape level is well over 1,000 to 3,000 joules per kilogram. That is your cold front that will stabilize the atmosphere associated with this trough right in here. Okay, and this continues. And I really think 
before the front moves in, you're going to have an opportunity for some strong and severe storms. I just don't see it being a high-end setup. But we got to see what happens. And then trough settles down, stabilizes the atmosphere. Could be another cool end of the week this coming week, beginning of your weekend next weekend. Um, cooler than average, I would say. And then the fuel builds back in, and then you're back to a normal summer flow, um, I think. We just kind of watch. It's getting pretty far out. The last thing I'll show you here, and honestly, I got deeper into this than, than what I wanted to. I pretty much uh, showed you everything I'm going to show you in one of these evening videos, but I always do that. The 6 to 10 day temperature outlook really shows this well, the trough. I mean, it shows it. It literally, it's literally a copy and paste of this. Right. I mean, it really, ridge, trough, ridge, trough. And below average temperatures, above average temperatures, confidence is very high in both through June 6th through the 10th. Okay, so yeah, um, a little bit of um, a full summer so far um, for areas up here. Of course, it's gotten warm already, but this was issued yesterday. I don't expect this to change much with even more agreement with models. But that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you again shortly.